What is shorting and how does it work? Most people think to make money trading stocks, you have to buy a stock and then sell the stock at a higher price. That is the traditional way to make money in the market. We call this going long. You buy a stock with the anticipation that it will rise and then you sell at a higher price. But you can, however, make money when a stock is going down, and you do this by shorting. This allows us to make money in both directions, which is really cool. Shorting is the exact opposite of going long. You sell a stock first, and then you cover at a lower price. The act of shorting is when you borrow shares to sell first with the anticipation that the price will fall, and then you buy them back at a lower price. Now, when I first read this definition of shorting, it really confused me because I thought, how do you sell shares first if you've never bought them in the first place? And when I buy them back, do I need to keep them? We'll go over how to short stocks in a minute, but I think going behind the scenes of how shorting works may help clear up how this is even possible. Shorting stocks is the act of borrowing shares, and it works just like how one of the ways a bank makes money. If our friend Nick here needs a loan to purchase a new vehicle, he would go to a bank and ask for a loan. If he qualifies, then the bank will be glad to loan him money with the promise that Nick pays back the loan on top of interest. Now, the bank either has a reserve to make loans or it can lend out the money it has accumulated from its members, either in their savings account, checking accounts, uh, money market accounts, etc., because the bank knows that not every one of its members at the same time is going to withdraw all their money at once. So instead of all that money just sitting there, they have an accounting system to be able to loan it to other people in exchange for interest. It's the same concept with shorting stocks. Brokers make money by loaning shares and charging interest. If Nick wanted to short 100 shares of company ABC, he needs to borrow the shares. So what he's going to do is request to borrow 100 shares from his broker, and his broker is going to take 100 shares from either its own inventory or the inventory of its members. Now, the members won't even know their shares are being borrowed, just like when you go to check your savings account at your bank, your account will reflect the correct value, which is really just a virtual number. But behind the scenes, your bank is actually using your money, which is why you gain a little bit of interest in your savings account, because you're essentially loaning the bank money when you deposit money into a savings account. So this is how you short a stock. Shorting is the exact opposite of taking a long position. When you take a long position, you are hitting the buy button to enter into a position, and then you hit the sell button to exit the position. But when you short, you hit the sell button first to enter into the position, and then you hit the buy button to exit the position. And this is how we profit from shorting. Let's say Nick here thinks that the current price of company ABC at $200 is way too high. He believes that the price will fall, so he wants to short 100 shares. He first needs to borrow the shares from his broker. So the broker loans Nick 100 shares of company ABC. Notice when Nick gets his shares, it is displayed as a negative number. Now, this is a screenshot from back when I shorted stocks all the time, so I'm sorry it's a little blurry, but notice inside the position box, it's a negative number. This means that I'm in a short position of 500 shares. The negative number indicates that I have borrowed the shares. So what Nick needs to do here is sell the shares first, since these are already purchased shares by somebody else. So Nick sells the shares at $200 with the anticipation that the price will go down. The price does go down to $180, and Nick is satisfied with the result. So in order to close the position, he needs to purchase the shares so he can return them in the same fashion he borrowed them. We call this covering the position. So Nick covers the position and the shares are returned. Nick is able to keep the difference from the price he borrowed the shares and the price he returned the shares back. Now this all happens at the speed of light. You don't have to wait for your broker to loan you the shares. Most of the time it's all just a matter of hitting the sell button first, then hit the buy button to cover. But there are some limitations when shorting. When stocks experience extreme volatility or some news has been released from a particular company, your broker may put certain restrictions on shorting for that particular stock. They may charge more to borrow. They may only let you short only if the stock is rising, or they may not even let you short at all. 
it really depends on the stock you're trying to short. If you remember when Nick was trying to get a loan for a vehicle, he has to qualify for the loan. He has to have good credit, make enough income, and have enough in savings. To be able to short, you have to have some qualifications as well. The first qualification is that you need to be trading in a margin account. You cannot short stocks in a cash account. And one of the requirements to open a margin account in the United States is to have and maintain a minimum of $2,000. Brokers may also require you to have a certain percentage of the amount you are trying to short already in the account and also maintained in the account during the period that you hold the short sale transaction. For example, let's say that you wanted to short 1,000 shares of a company that is priced at $10. That total transaction cost would be $10,000. Your broker may require you to have 150% of the full value of that transaction. So that means you must have $15,000 in your account to be able to short $10,000 worth of stock. And they may require you to maintain 50% of the transaction price in the account at all times while you are still in the short trade. These requirements differ from broker to broker and from stock to stock, but the reason they have these restrictions is because you are selling shares that you do not own. And the monetary requirements act as a form of collateral to ensure that the shares are returned. And if your short position moves against you in a large amount, you could end up owing money to your broker. Because with shorting, there is an unlimited amount of money that you can lose. When going long on a stock, if you are wrong on the trade, the most you can lose is 100% of your money because the stock can only go to $0 and that's it. But when shorting a stock, if you were wrong on the trade, your loss could be infinite because there is no number the stock would stop at. So your broker protects themselves from that happening by requiring you to have a certain amount extra to pay them back if your loss gets too big. Now, hopefully you would have closed your position before your loss gets too big, but your broker does have the authority to step in and sell your position without your permission if that happens. It's part of the agreement you sign when opening a margin account. So sorting carries greater risk if you hold too long, which is why it is even more important to cut your losses quickly. So that is how shorting works. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching.